Every five years I rebuild my Freenauts fire server by replacing old hardware with new hardware. One component that I always toss out after running 24-7 for five years is the case fans. For the 2015 build, I had deep cool 120mm fans in front, NGST 120mm fans in back and bottom, and a pair of Apia 140mm fans at top. There's nothing special about these fans except for the bottom fan. The bottom of the case requires air circulation to avoid overheating the hard drives. The regular 120mm fan is 25mm thick and blocks the bottom drive bay. Not a problem when I only had six hard drives. For the 2020 rebuild, I added two new hard drives and needed all eight drive bays. How can I have a fan and a hard drive occupy the same space at the same time? The solution was the Silverstone Slim 120mm fan for $14 each. The Slim fan is 15mm thick or 10mm thinner than a regular case fan. I used to include anti-vibration rubber mounts to attach the Slim fan to the case. The Slim fan will blow hot air out since the power supply is to it. It is also blowing hot air out. If the Slim fan was blowing air in, it would suck up the hot air from the power supply. The other problem I had with the bottom fan was the power and SATA cables interfering with the fan. If I wasn't careful putting the side panel back on. That problem fixed itself when I replaced the non-modular power supply with a modular power supply needed only the mainboard and hard drive power cable. By switching the hard drives from the mainboard to the SAS controller card, the SAS to SATA breakout cables also reduced cable clutter over the bottom fan. I still wanted a finger grill on the top of the slim fan to prevent my fat fingers from interfering with the fan. Adding the finger grill created another problem by blocking the hard drive from going into the bottom drive bay. I had to cut out the first three rails of the finger grill to accommodate the bottom edge of the hard drive that sits on top of the slim fan. If I was to replace the bottom hard drive, I would have to remove the hard drive above it to have extra wiggle room needed to clear the finger grill. Since I added a SAS control card to this rebuild, they tend to run hot at 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius. If I ever add a 10 gigabit network card, it will run just as hot. The case does have a 120mm or 140mm fan mount on the side panel that is directly above the suspension cards. I mounted another slim fan with a finger grill. With the slim fan to blow air into the case, I used the included screws to attach the fan with a dust filter in between it and the side panel. I plugged the ketchup and mustard power cable into a three pan extension cable to provide extra length when removing the side panel. The side mounted fan reduced the temperature of the SAS control card by 10%. As for all the other case fans, I have three Arctic F12 PWM 120mm fans in front and back, and a pair of Arctic F14 Scient 140mm fans at top. Unlike the Silverstone Slim fan, the Arctic fans have black power cables. The 120mm fans come in a 5 pack for $30, and the 140mm fan are $9 each. These fans are quite affordable when rebuilding multiple systems. Since the main board only has two fan headers, I added a pair of deep cool fan control hubs for $9 each. One hub plugs into the CPU fan header for the 4 pan CPU cooler and Arctic 120mm fans. The other hub plugs into the system fan header for the 3 pan Arctic 140mm fans and Silverstone 120mm fans. I added 3 and 4 pan extension cables where needed for better cable management. What about the temperatures? My home office is a constant 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius, give or take a few degrees. The external case temperature is a few degrees higher than room temperature. The hard drives are a few degrees higher than the external case temperature. Those temperatures are no different from the previous rebuilt. The total cost of replacing all my case fans came to about $100. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and click on the notification bell to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching.